The Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast brings you a unique view of Mesa through its vibrant business community and the subjects that are important. The podcast is produced in the Mesa Chamber of Commerce Media Studio, sponsored by the University of Phoenix. Our podcast is hosted by Mesa Chamber of Commerce CEO Sally Harrison. Please enjoy this episode of the Mesa Chamber Inside Business Podcast. So let's um, let's talk a little bit about I, you know I'm a small business. I just say you know what I want to outsource some of this, and I kind of want to yep. have somebody manage it for me. What are some good best practices? Some good questions to ask that entity that I may be hiring? Like, what do I want to know about them before I sign a contract or give them money or um, give them my passwords? My shortest answer, yeah. My shortest answer would be, give me a list of your clients um, and, uh, and their contact information and I'll randomly choose a few and call them. And I'd rather just hear from your clients what they think. Like, great, you've given me a sales pitch. Now let me hear what they have to say. Because it's, it's dangerous. Like, I mean, anybody can say they're a social media marketing person. Anybody can hang up a shingle and go, oh, I like represent, you know, a hundred companies and, you know, or I'm an expert in running social for, you know, dentist's office or whatever it is. And, um, and there's, there's, there's no like, oh, you, you know, you have credentials in that. No, it's like, oh no, I'm pretty handy or I know how to post, you know, so it can be a little loose um, and it's not cheap. You know, typically from my experience, what I've seen is that they typically charge you like 500 bucks a month. And then they'll, they'll say like, okay, for $500 a month, I'll do this many posts for you to your, your corporate or social channels. Um, if you have some time um, or you have a family member that's somewhat young, um, you're almost, you know, almost just as valuable to entrust them with it unless this company really brings something to the table. So if they have a marketing background, um, they are very good at writing uh, content and you can see that there's some virality from their posts and how you check on virality would be, you know, show me some examples of companies that you're, you're doing this for and show me some of the posts and then look at their network. So you can see like, oh, okay, you posted this for this dentist office. I see that dentist office has 200 followers, but yet you managed 3000 likes on that story versus two likes or no likes or whatever. Because if you're just posting content for the sake of posting content and you're paying for it, like I can do that for free, you know? So, um, and then other than that, you know, I think it, you know, comes down to comfort, you know, do they, are they, do they have a strategy that you agree with, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, for $500 a month, that's $6,000 a year. Hopefully they bring something to the table. Mm, indeed. So uh, question, is there a social network out there that you are like, hey, people aren't paying attention to that on the marketing side that people are using on say the consumer side that maybe people should kind of take a look at? Uh, I wish I had a good answer for you. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all right. I just thought I'd see if maybe there is a sleeper out there that that, uh, you know, people may want to pay attention to. I don't know. Um, I, mean, there's, I, I mean, there's new ones like TikTok's taken off, but I don't know how to make money from it. You know, I, I was say, I, I'm not there's some, there's some people out there that do, but yeah, I'm not sure. And to okay. be honest, you know, uh, uh, like, I don't know how it translates. Some of it translates into business. This is me dating myself, right? Like, you know, right. if, you know <laughs> I'm not 15 years old and, and have 30,000 followers uh, to be able to tell you like what I'm doing special that's, that's making it hop. <laughs> so um, tell everybody a little bit about you. Like, you know, obviously we, we covered that you worked for LinkedIn for a long time. Yep. Um, but tell us what you're doing now with Social HP and that kind of stuff. Sure. Yeah. So uh, um, after I left LinkedIn, uh, I started consulting for Social HP. So I advised them on their on some of their business strategy and their customer acquisition strategy. And I have conversations with with prospective customers. And um, and then in, and also helping them build out their their service. Uh, structure so that they can support clients uh, as they add them on. And um, Social HP is a, it's an employee advocacy platform. So it's, it's all about social sharing. Uh, it's, it's not built for the solopreneur. It's built for companies that have a group of employees. It doesn't have to be a big company, but they have, they have some employees and um, they want to utilize uh, that, those employees networks to help get the word out. 
know, help get the word out to their clients and their prospective clients about the good work that they're doing, uh, thought leadership, industry news, company content, as I, you know, obviously referenced, you know, more than once in our conversation so far. And, uh, and it's all about uh, building out your reach and, and, and engaging more people. And so to give you a quick example of some LinkedIn stats, um, the average LinkedIn member has 800 connections. Um, one would typically assume, oh, like if I have 10 employees, they all know the same people. Well, the short answer is yes, they all know each other. But actually on LinkedIn, 97% of your employees' networks do not overlap outside of your company. So there's a huge opportunity there, especially if the average person has 800 connections. So if I get 10 people to share a story, I've now reached an additional 8,000 people. And who are they connected to? Well, they're connected to our current customers and they're connected to a lot of our prospects. So there's a good audience that I can reach. But so now if I take a company, an example, they have 50 employees. The average LinkedIn company that I've seen uh, that has 50 employees has about 1,000 followers. And that includes the 50 people that work there. So if I do a LinkedIn company page update, I'll reach a thousand people, including my 50 employees. If I just get, if I ask one employee to share that story, I'll reach another 800. So I almost double it just by getting one employee to share. If I get all 50 of my employees to share, I'll reach almost 40,000 people extra over the 1000 people that are following my company. So I'm 40 times more like my reach is 40 times better through my employees' networks than just my company alone. So it's a very smart move to go, well, here's, a, here's you know, access. Here's this great, powerful audience that I can get my stories in front of. So then if we use that, you know, that sharing cadence and we make our employees look smart and we make them feel proud because we're sharing that kind of content, then we're making them more, um, more accessible. We're strengthening our brand reputation through our employee base, which no better place to do it than through your employees because you you trust you know you hired them they're great people they're doing great work for you you know why not you know strengthen your brand through them as they're the representatives of the organization anyway when they talk to clients so so that's the example but now let's take okay so they can reach 40,000 people those 50 people well what size of company would have 40,000 employees uh, sorry 40,000 followers the average company with 40,000 followers has 2,000 employees so my 50 person company can have the same power or network effect as a company with 2000 employees. So what a huge opportunity for me to level the playing field just by activating my employees networks and competing with somebody that is whatever, 40 times larger. That's cool. And people can learn more about that at socialhp.com. Is that their URL? That's right. Yeah. Socialhp.com or they can, they, we didn't yeah, exactly. That, pretty, so I thought pretty, I'd ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Socialhp.com. They can look me up on LinkedIn, Jonathan I'm, you know, what of, I think one of only a couple that are on there, but uh, also my uh, uh, LinkedIn URL is, you know, LinkedIn slash basically Jonathan Baldock. So I'm easy to find on it. Um, so they can ask me or they can, you know, check out our website and, and see what we're up to. Cool. So um, Jonathan, any last sort of parting advice for, you know, a small business that wants to leverage the opportunity to generate sales out of their social channels? Um, yeah. Uh, my advice is do it. That's the biggest thing that's holding people back is just not doing it. So a little bit of information goes a long way. And you don't have to be an expert at this. It may seem daunting, but just that simple principle of finding stories that are compelling, you, you know, you don't have to write them. I could just share, share like a Harvard Business Review article or something from my local paper that, you know, is compelling and it talks about the industry and what's happening. Maybe it's a new technology. I'm a plumber and I share something and say, hey, here's this new widget that's really, really cool. I think it's pretty awesome. And then people are like, yeah, that is awesome. They think that's awesome, but they're also like, hey, thank you for sharing that. So you go up a notch. So I would just say, you know, take the step and start doing it. Don't put any pressure on yourself, but, but at least, you know, take those steps in that direction. And what you'll find is that over time, uh, it will definitely pay off for your business. And it's such a time, a small time commitment. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us today, Jonathan. I appreciate all of your expertise and sharing some really great tips and strategies and, and 
things that people want to keep in mind as they work to sell through their social media channels. This has been a Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast. You can find all podcast episodes at iTunes, Spotify, or your own favorite podcast website. You can also find them online at mesachamber.org. Content of this podcast is copyright the Mesa Chamber of Commerce, unless otherwise noted.